Hello, and welcome to my Heavenly Bodies Trophy Guide. <clears throat> Heavenly Bodies is currently free as of November the 22nd if you own PS Plus, but it will usually cost you around £17 off of the UK PS Store, or £20 if you purchase the Platinum through us. The game is a quirky puzzle game where the movement will be your enemy. It's a lot of fun and can be played local co-op, which will make great for couch co-op gaming. And the Platinum level will depend on how long it will take you to get used to the controls. It's not really that hard to control yourself on assisted difficulty. Personally, I'd consider the game a 3 out of 10 in that sense, but it's the Newtonian difficulty that will be the real uh, hassle here, so you'll need to make sure that you can learn how to do the movement efficiently. There are two stacks of the game for the PS4 and the PS5. I'd say it'd probably take you first time around 5 to 6 hours, but then the second time around, if you wanted to do it again, to net yourself two platinum trophies, it'll be 3 to 4 hours. There are seven levels in total, each consists of special objectives to do, and each have collectibles in them. In this guide, I'll tell you how to achieve everything in each mission. To do this, I actually do it in two full one runs. One is in assisted difficulty, uh, where you can get the collectibles and the miscellaneous trophies, and then I go through it a second time in the Newtonian difficulty. You can do them all in Newtonian difficulty to save time, but I'd recommend you do that on your second stack playthrough, or if you think you're an absolute god gamer, then go ahead and try it for the first time. So when you start up your save, you want to make sure that you're on assisted difficulty first of all. I made the mistake of staying on classic. Go on assisted, it's so much easier. Uh, and then this means that you can move your arms. You basically point your arms in a certain direction and you swim. So if you move the joysticks up and your hands go up, you will then move up without having to propel yourself. So it's going to make stuff a hell of a lot easier. So we start off on mission 1, Sunlight. The objectives for this are to configure the internal power system, find a way into the airlock, and to unwind the folded solar panel. The side objectives, which are going to be needed for the trophies, a trophy, is to take the hidden collectible back to the comms terminal, complete in Newtonian mode, and to pry open the airlock door with a tennis racket. There are six trophies we can get in this mission to begin with. They are called First Contact, Power Restored, Back From Out of Space, which can be done on nearly any mission, Safety safety First, Minor Instant, and Greetings Viewers. Start as all missions start by pressing the button at the comms and reading the page. This will allow you to leave the area. After you read the page, you can also click the touchpad to be able to get hints and uh, basically be able to tell you how to solve the puzzles going forward if you didn't want to watch the guide. Now some useful tips for this game, square reorientate your camera. This is a super handy trick to be able to just make you sure that you can do the controls much easier. Always make sure that you're trying to reorientate yourself so you're not moving yourself whilst you're upside down and inverting the controls. Also, whenever it comes to prying open a door or to moving a lever or to extend something, which we will be doing, have one hand on a non-movable object and that will be your anchor point. Then use your other hand and the joystick on your other hand to move that thing and rotate it. I went through a lot of hassle just grabbing onto things with two hands a lot of the time and just wiggling in the air. It's just going to save you so much time doing things like this. Once through to the next area, head to your right and open the case. In there is a camera. Hold onto the camera with R2 or L2 and then click X to take some pictures. This will get you the trophy greetings viewers. Next, go to the pod opposite this and open the storage to get yourself out a tennis racket. This will be the annoying, it's uh, an annoying side objective that you're going to need to do. What you want to do is hold this racket by the ends and then go to the locked airlock door. You want to try and ram the handle in between these two doors, push it in as far as you can and then start prying it left to right with one arm. It is really tedious but it is possible. Uh, this will get you the side objective that's needed towards the Shining Brightly trophy. Once completed you can go for the Safety First and Minor Incident trophy. 
the footage here is in the airlock sequence on another mission because I forgot to do it on the first mission, but the same thing applies. Just make sure only one door is open at a time and wait for the small bar to be full slash depleted depending on what way you're going. And that way you'll get the safety first for completing a sequence of going into one of these, uh, going into that pod successfully. Once you've done that, then simply open both doors and that will allow you to get the minor instant trophy. You'll have a massive gush of wind that pushes you out uh, because the the different sets of pressure. And that's how you know you have that trophy done. Now that you're in space, swim your way out until you reach around 90 on the signal loss. Then swim back towards the ship. This will give you the near death experience trophy. But this can be done whenever you're out in space. So long as you're on assisted difficulty. If you're on classic difficulty or on Newtonian difficulty. You will not be able to use this swimming technique. And it will be much harder for you to get this trophy. Now continue to do the objective. Straighten out the solar dish that's over to the right as soon as you come out. A little bit down from that solar dish. You're going to see a boot wedged in the corner on the outside of the hole. Bring that back into the ship, decompress, and then make your way back to the comms for the collectible done. You don't need to return the collectible to the comms center every time, but I'll let you know on which ones you don't need to do it. So once you've returned that to the hole, grab a hold onto the walkie talkie on the side of the comms, click X, and that will be mission one completed. The next mission is mission 2 called Data. The objective here is just to calibrate the free antennas uh, and the main dish. The side objective here is to take the hidden collectible to the comms terminal, complete a Newtonian mode, and to assemble and calibrate the tower in under 10 minutes. This is personally one of the hardest levels that I experience and has, has one of the harder side objectives to, which is to assemble it in 10 minutes. In this run in particular, I think I've done it in 11 minutes 40, but that's because I made some silly, silly mistakes like not making sure the red wires are plugged in to give power up to the entire tower. But I actually ended up redoing this in Newtonian mode and getting it done in 8 minutes. So once you know what to do, replaying it and knuckling it down, you'll have about 2 or 3 minutes to spare, so it ain't too hard. If you want a separate guide for how to do this in 10 minutes, then please let me know. I have the footage, I can just upload it, it just would have meant that this video would have been a little bit too long for my liking. So you start this video by connecting the blue and red wires to the sockets, then adjusting the solar panel uh, to point slightly downwards. Uh, you can see that you've got the right angle, um, or you can see what angle that you need to get by going onto the touchpad and looking in the book, you'll actually see a picture of the tower and what angle you need to do. You'll also know that you've got the right angle because the machine, instead of showing a green light, will start showing a blue light and this bar will fill up and once that bar is full, you're done. You can then unplug the blue wire and start pushing the machine up as the door will open up. I find one of the best ways to do this is by grabbing onto the machine and then grabbing onto any other surface and sort of holding onto the machine using the other arm to pull yourself to push it upwards. Once you reach uh, the end of this location, you'll see a little hatch. Simply go outside the hatch, um, connect, uh, hold onto the hook at where the actual hook is and click X to unattach the cable. Um, because then that means that we can actually rotate the tower a little bit later on. Then go back in and pull the lever down so the, end, uh, the, the structure starts coming up. I'd advise you plug in the blue and the red cables now because uh, I actually went outside and readjusted everything and then plugged them in. Um, but if you plug them in now, go outside, pull the satellite down and adjust the satellite so it's slightly pointing upwards. Um, you'll know that you've then got it right because it will go blue and once it goes blue then you know that that's completed and you can move on to the next one.
on this when you go back in remove the blue cable from the dish and then make sure that you attach the red cable to the next section going upwards so then there's power going up the structure then start pushing your way up to the left will be another hatch to go out and unhook once it's done come back in pull the lever down to start the structure to move again then go out to the right and fix that dish i find the best way to do this is to grab hold of the base of the dish that doesn't extend then using your other arm to pull it out to fully extend the dish Again, with everything plugged in, you'll know when it's done. There's no pointing in this, you just need to fully extend it. So you know when it's done, when it shines up blue. Now what you want to go, um, come back in, and once the thing's fully aligned, you start pushing your way up. You'll see to your left, there'll be two yellow handles sticking out either side, and attached to one of them is a hook. You want to unhook that, and you want to push those le those yellow bits that are coming out on the side up, along with the machine. This will be the last extension to the base that you need. Once at the top, you want to plug in the only the blue wire, you won't need to plug in a red wire. Then you can head out and realign the dish. I find the best way to do this is to grab one hand onto the circular dish, like my right arm onto the circular dish, and then use my left arm to grab onto the top of the structure and sort of pull downwards, because you're trying to pull the dish to turn slightly to its left. Then you want to make sure the red wire is plugged in, float around to the top, extend out the dish, and then that should then complete your final satellite. That is everything done objective wise here, but if you want to continue going around the dish, you'll see that there is actually a collectible stuck at, on the other side of this satellite dish that you want to pick up and bring all the way back to the remote comms location to be able to get the collectible for this mission, and then that will conclude mission two.
Now we move on to mission three, vision. The objective here is to uh, repair the crane arms using the ratchet, assemble the telescope, and then deploy the telescope. Then the side objectives here is to take the hidden collectible back to the comms, assemble and deploy the space telescope without using the crane arms, and then to complete a Newtonian mode. There is also another trophy you can get here that is called going up alongside the one for completing the mission, which going up is to basically get into the assembly bay. I'm going to try to uh, have a voiceover for this one instead of having it all scripted. So what I like to do is once you grab the from the paper from the comms and the report, I like to unhook the thing over to the left um, or on the right side just to be able to remove the debris for later on. Uh, you're going to be making your way up. You unhook, I unhook this here again for later on. You can see that that crowbar is locked. Uh, you can't move that crowbar around. It's basically an objective later on that we're going to need to do. Um, you want to grab this solar panel and you want to take it up uh, to this top area and you'll see this little lift with things inside it. Um, what you want to do is you want to click the red button to send the lift up and sort of let the debris move out by its own accord it will sort of end up trying like eventually end up pushing yourself if it doesn't push itself straight away just just make it go up and down again up and down again until eventually the lift is clear this is the same lift that we're going to be getting in for the going up trophy as well which we'll be achieving later on uh so once that debris is out of the way and what you're then going to want to do is load the solar panel uh inside this uh, inside of the thing it's um can be kind of tedious to get the solar panel to actually move out of it once it's in. What you can do is do it on two separate runs, so then you can actually use the crane's hands to be able to knock the solar panel out. The only reason I don't use the crane's hands here to knock the solar panel out is because I'm trying to go for that side uh, objective to not use the crane's hand to assemble at all, and I don't know if it will void it. So I just make life awkward for myself and try and... Uh, shove myself into the elevator with the solar panel to be able to make it go up. Once you're eventually in, you can assemble the telescope. As you uh, you can see this again by touching the touchpad, you can see where everything needs to go. There's a solar panel that needs to be attached to the top, a solar panel that needs to be attached to the bottom, the antenna needs to be at attached to the top right, and then the weird lever washing machine looking thing needs to be attached into the right side of the telescope. And once that's been attached into, you will get a notification about a supply drop that's basically attached itself to the bottom of the entire place where you are currently. That you'll need to make your way all the way back down to, uh, to be able to go and get that part. So once you've got that notification, make your way all the way down to the bottom. Go round to each one of these and unhook the crate. I sometimes like to take one of the uh, yellow um, clip things and clip them to myself for later on because we're basically going to be bringing it all the way up into that room where we saw the crowbar in. And we're going to try and hook the corners to make it so it stands still. And then it will be easier for us to then use the crowbar to be able to uh, open up the door. So if you go to the right side, that's what I'm doing here, and then pull it up, make sure that you clear the boxes at the top of here beforehand just unclip the yellow thing and pull the boxes into the room then that way you'll be able to move it up and maneuver it into the room a little bit more efficiently i sort of forgot to clear out this side because i ended up clearing up the other side you then want to make sure you uh, you clip the box down uh, either end will do just a side where you can make it a little bit more balanced uh grab the crowbar and just wedge it into the like the, the the crack that you can see. You can see that an end's got a little bit more of a darker shade to it. And out inside there will be a lens. You then want to grab hold of that lens and take that up to the elevator. Place it into the elevator. Uh, make it go up. So send it up first without you, I'd say. Um, then when that floats out, then you go up and take it. And you want to bring that over to the left side of the telescope. And once that's in, you need to remove the lens or off the end of that and then once the lens has been removed off the ends uh, that will be it will tell you that you just need to deploy the uh, space telescope so if you then uh, unhook, you don't need to unhook them personally here like what I was doing again I, I got mixed up with the side objectives there is a button down there to just unhook them all by default but I just done this to be safe so you don't have to do this uh, but unhook the telescope and then go back down the elevator and pull the lever 
and then that will shoot the telescope off and out into the world. Uh, if the telescope doesn't go out, you need to go back up that elevator anyway. Um, so head your way back up the elevator, push the telescope out, and what you'll find is that when you come outside, to the left, you're going to see a Spotnik stuck on the uh, on the left side of the, the, the shaft. So grab the Spotnik, come back in, go back down the elevator, bring that all the way back to comms, and... Uh, then you'll have the uh, you'll be you have completed mission three. Next up will be Mission 4 Minerals. The objective here is to attach the thrusters to the capsule, locate three mineral samples and extract them, and then return them all back to the space station. The side objectives here is to bring an asteroid back with you, redeploy the space telescope which has gotten stuck out there somewhere, take the hidden collectibles back to the comms room and then complete it in Newtonian mode. There is a missed trophy that we can get here. Uh, at the very start, if you want to head down to the right side of the station, there will be a storage unit. Inside this will be a red flag, so pick that up and place it inside the pod. This is what we're going to be needing for the Charting the Stars trophy later. Once, that inside, once that's inside the pod, come back around to the outside and attach all four thrusters onto each corner. This will open the bay doors below you and allow you to get into the pod and fly it away. The top chair of the pod controls the flying and the bottom chair controls uh, the crane, crane arm on the sides. You can also see that on that side where the crane arm is are three attachments. Uh, these will be the drill, the flamethrower and the crane hand which will all need to be used to extract these three minerals going forward. You'll also see in the pod you've got a yellow lever, which that will be the lock controls to be able when you bay, so you'll need to pull that to unbay, and in the red lever which allows you to open and close the hatch doors.
Once you reach the first location you're sent to, extract the red mineral by using the crane arm and grabbing onto the drill arm and just holding R2 to drill into it. Stay holding R2 until the red light that's flashing inside your ship stops blinking. That means that you've successfully extracted it. Now simply hold L2, place the drill back onto the rack where you picked it up from, and we can proceed into getting the trophy. Open up the hatch door uh, and take the flag by the flag end and fly outside of your pod. You want to basically jam the rod end of this flagpole into the meteor that you just got extracted the minerals from and that will get you the charting the stars trophy. Once done, get yourself back inside your pod, close the lid and fly off to your next location. Once you're at your next location, you'll see that this blue mineral is now blocked by loads of broken rocks. You can either switch to the crane arm here and pull out the rocks, or you can actually go out and pull the rocks out yourself. I'd actually advise you go out of your pod and pull the rocks out by hand, because one of the rocks you'll need to bring back into the pod with you uh, for the side, tr um, the side objective of bringing an asteroid into uh, back to the base with you. I actually opted into making this a bit harder for myself as you'll see in a bit. I actually take one of the bigger bits of rock and struggle to bring it in just because I wanted a bigger trophy to bring back. Um, but just try and, it doesn't matter what size it is, just bring one of the rocks and put them in. Once you've moved them out of the way, go back and control the crane arm, get hold of the drill and drill away. This time it will be a blue light. Same rule applies, drill into it until the blue light stops flashing, then hold L2 to bring the drill back out, close everything up and fly off to the last location.
the last extract will be at the bottom part of the rock. You'll be able to tell by the large patch of ice around the sh some shards of rock. Switch to the only tool that you haven't used yet, which will be the flamethrower, and this will melt the ice away. You can then either use the arm add-on or the drill add-on to move the final rocks out of the way. I normally like to use the drill add-on, so I hold R2 whilst also pulling the opposite direction of the rock, and it almost sort of unwedges them. And once they're out of the way, uh, you can move that, you can like come out of the pod and just move them to be a little bit easier. You find that it's kind of hard to get the arm in to be able to extract the mineral. What I find the best way is to do is to get the drill arm extended almost horizontally, then fly into the hole, then quickly come off of the pilot seat, go back into the crane seat and instantly hold R2. It's a bit tedious, but you can get there eventually. This time you'll see a yellow blinking light when you've successfully drilled into it. So as soon as that stops blinking, you've got your third and final mineral. But do not return back to base yet.
there are two things now that we need to do. Uh, the first one is to free the telescope, and then the second one is to grab the collectible. You can see on the map of the place, uh, you can see on the map by pressing the touchpad that there, the telescope, there'll be a question mark or a telescope down to the, uh, the southwest of where we're positioned. So you want to fly down there towards that telescope. Once there, fly out of your craft and unattach one of the hooks from the side. Attach it to the spot on the telescope, then re-enter the ship and fly around. Eventually it will unwedge itself out of the rock and you can go back outside and unattach it so it's just not floating around with you. Just be careful that your asteroid doesn't accidentally fly out of your pod while the door's open. Also be careful that you don't smash into a rock and that unattaches the thrusters, which can happen throughout the entirety of this mission. You can just go back out and reattach them, it's just a pain in the ass that we don't need to deal with. On the map, you'll see to the left side of where the telescope was, there's another question mark. This is the collectible. You want to fly slowly into this location, as you'll see that I end up ramming the disc and sent it hurtling through the rocks. So approach it slowly, open your hatch door and then go and bring it in. Or if you want to be uh, a professional about it, you can actually open up your hatch door and then fly so then the disc comes into the hatch itself. Once you have it, simply close the hatch uh, door and return back to the main ship. Once back, put the ship back to how you found it, uh, then pull the yellow lever to make sure that you are locked in. Only then when you're locked in, pull the red lever to open up the hatch door. You're going to want to bring the asteroid out of the ship, so then it will trigger that you've brought the asteroid back with you for the side objective. Then you want to bring the golden record all the way to the comms room, so then you've got the collectible done. Now, just go back and pick up each individual colour container and place them in the slots above where the pod entrance is. And once that's done, you'll uh, be able to return back to the comms and finish off the mission. Now we move on to Mission 5 Oxygen. 
The objectives here are to open out the sunlight shutters, remove the and plant 10 new plants, and start the oxygen extraction. The side objectives are to take the hidden collectible back to the comms, grow a plant specimen in every single bay to which there are 20 of, and to complete the mission on Newtonian difficulty. There's another miscellaneous trophy on this level called Bon Voyage, which is for throwing a gardening tool through a dispensary unit, which I'll show you later. But first of all, you want to make your way outside of the decompression chamber and to remove the rubble that is stopping you from being opened up the shutters. Don't go back in straight away, however. What you then want to do is fly around the side of this and you'll find a glove collectible that is tucked away. Grab that, bring it back into the comms to get yourself that side, um, a side objective. Once you're back inside, pull the lever to open up the shutters. This will make to melt away all the ice and allow you to remove the dead saplings that are lying around in the bays. You want to pull out all 11 saplings. You can bring them to the dispenser unit to stop them flying around and bugging you, but it's honestly too much hassle when there's too many of them to do. So I'll just say pull them out and just leave them floating around. They shouldn't get in your way. We don't need to be tidy. Once all's been removed, make your way down to the opposite end to where the decompression chamber is and you'll see a storage box. Open it up and you'll find a trail. Now bring that back into the room and place it into the dispensary box that will be right in front of you and click the red button. This will send the trail outside and net you the trophy Bon Voyage.
Head back to that same storage box and you'll find a bag. Take the bag out and you can attach it to the hole above where the drawing of the bag is behind you. Then continue down into the crusher room. You want to do what you want to do here is bring all three of the minerals uh, that you can see to the left and place them underneath the crusher. Once all three are in place, press the red button below and it will smash them into smaller pieces. Once they're smashed, grab the pipe at the top and click X. This will turn out to be a vacuum so you can hoover up all of the small shards that you've broken up. You don't need to pick up every single little piece, but try to pick up as many as you can. These will get sucked up into the room below you. Now head into that room below you and click the red button in the center. You can hold on to the little metal, uh, metal circle in the middle part of the room so the whole thing spins around you, but I'd advise you just click the button and pull yourself out. Once out, go to where you first placed the bag, pull the lever and that bag will now fill up with soil. You can now grab onto that bag and unattach it from uh, the dock that it's at and attach it onto one of your side clips and fly back into the uh, spawn room. Now what you want to do is go around to each individual bay, take out some soil and place it into each bay. There are going to be 20 in total that you're going to need to fill up. If you ever run out of soil, you can always bring the bag back to the same place where you filled it up and do the same thing. You don't need to worry about crushing uh, any more of the dispensary stuff. I will add, if no soil has actually come out of the dispensary, it means that you don't have enough for certain materials, so just make sure that you go and hoover up more materials and then activate the, the crusher again, and then that should be fine.
Once all of the bays are filled, you now want to go into the center and rotate the valve to bring the water pressure up. Once that water pressure is up, you can go to either the left or right hose, grab it by the nozzle and click X to start spraying water onto the soil patches. I advise you hold the nozzle with one hand and the other hand to hold onto the metal bits that are around you so you can easily water each bay. And between each bay, click X to turn the hose off, otherwise it will send you flying around uh, the area. You can know when something is getting water because a blue light will start to flash and you'll know when it's got enough water when the blue light stops flashing and it just stays there permanently. You want to do this to every single bay, all 20 bays. And then once the 20th plant has grown, you'll get the side challenge completed. You can now go back to the center, hit the O2 machine and complete the mission. Mission 6, Energy. The objective here is to locate and replace the fuse and restore the power to the generator by cleaning its two pipes, tightening three discs and charging the spark plug, or changing the spark plug. The side objective here is to find the hidden collectible, which you do not need to bring back to the comm center, you just need to grab onto it, and then you need to complete it in Newtonian mode. There's no miscellaneous trophies on this mission, uh, and the collectible actually requires you to plunge three different locations for you, be, for you to be able to get it on the final one. It's also majority pitch black. Uh, it's hard for me to tell you how to navigate it. I think the best way you can do is just click on the touchpad and you'll be able to see a layout of the map. Just simply follow that layout of the map on your way around and you should be fine.
On your way through the pipes, eventually you will see uh, a plunger that is lit up. Simply make your way round to it by opening up through a hatch and yank the plunger out. You want to make sure that the lid of what the plunger is attached to also comes out. You'll be able to tell if you see air f uh, flowing out from the hole from where the plunger was. Attach this plunger back onto your waist and continue this through this dark maze to find the next plunger location. Just before the fans that you can see that will blow you through pipes, you want to use the plunger over to the right of it and pull the lid off in the second location. Make sure to reattach the plunger once you've done pulling that place off to proceed to the final location for the collectible. Once you go through the winding pipes and open up another hatch door, you'll eventually end up to where the broken fuse is. Take out that broken fuse and head into the room below you. You'll see that there's loads of drawers labelled with what you need. The first drawer as you enter to the left will be the fuse that we need to replace. Take it out, plug it into where the broken fuse was and proceed to the door to your left that has now opened up. The yellow lever, as soon as you enter this room, is what turns on the lights. I advise you to turn it on first. I didn't for whatever reason, but turn the lights on and then move around to the final location to plunge. If you get the glitch that I have here, where the lid of the last collectible is actually stuck on the plunger, you can actually hold one end onto the plunger handle and the other end onto the lid and just sort of keep tugging at them until eventually one of them comes off. It's tedious, but it is possible to unstick it instead of having to replay the entire mission.
Once that's done, you'll see a collar will fly out. Simply grab hold of this collar and that will class the collectible for this mission. No need to bring it back to where you started. Head back into the room where you got the fuse, and opposite the drawer where you got that fuse, you will find a new spark plug. Take that out and go and attach it to the top right of the generator in the light switch room. You want to remove the old, plugs, uh, old spark switch, attach the new one, then attach the red wire to that new spark switch. Head back into the drawer room, and this time you want to open up the storage box, which will have a chimney sweep. Attach this to your belt and go back to the generator. Move the shell down by gripping one hand onto, uh, onto one of the poles, and the other one onto the generator shell itself, and then just pull it down. Then, detach your sweeper, pull it into the pipe, and begin to move it back and forth to clean it out. You can see if you finish cleaning it, if you end up it's going onto your touchpad and under the objective it should say one out of two pipes cleaned. Now move over onto the other side to clean the last pipe. Once cleaned, we need to get the crank to tighten up the discs. Go to the vents where air is blowing through at the bottom of this area and climb your way up. Inside you'll find a crank stuck, simply grab it and let the air pull you and the crank out. Now bring the crank over to the blue screws on the discs and tighten them. You'll know when it's done because you won't be able to tighten it up anymore. Uh, once it is done, you can unhook it by clicking X and then you can move over to the other two discs to finish them off.
Upon fixing all three, you'll need to pull an emergency lever at the top of the room. Simply pull that lever and this mission is complete. No need to go back to the comms unit at all and we'll proceed over to the final mission. Now we're on to the final mission, Mission 7, Evacuation. The objective here is just to follow standard procedures, and the sign objective here is to bring the collectible to the pod, which will also let you an achievement which is called Bring Home Gold, and to complete a Newtonian mode. Once you've gone through the sequence where it's basically shooting you for everything, make your way through the wreckage as you see me doing. Eventually, you'll reach the part where we use the vacuum. Grab the grabber and try to reach in and pick out the collectible. Simply touching the collectible, however, isn't enough. We will need to carry this throughout the entirety of this level if we want to get the Bring Home Gold Trophy. But apart from that, the rest of this level is very straightforward. When you are out in space, make sure that you do not let go of the collectible, otherwise it can fly out into space and you'll lose it and you'll have to restart the mission. But apart from that, just follow through everything that I do here, bring back the collectible into the pod, and once the pod detaches, you should get yourself the achievement.
After your pod has landed in the ocean, what you want to do is pull the red lever over to your left and that will uh, make a hole open and a ladder will come down. You want to awkwardly make your way up this ladder and come out into the water and then eventually there will be a hook that comes down that you want to grab onto and attach onto yourself. Now when you come over into doing this into Newtonian mode, you can't simply point your arms in the direction you want to go. But what you can do is point your arms in the direction you want to go and tap L1, R1 at different times consistently as if you're sort of kicking your feet and paddling. That will slowly move you towards the hook. With all of that done, that should be all side objectives done for each mission, all collectible as well achieved from each mission. So the only thing that will be left is to complete uh, the final side objectives for each one, which is completed it on the Newtonian difficulty. If what you want to do is back out to the main menu, click start, click on your save game, but instead of assisted difficulty, move it over to Newtonian difficulty. Now, I'm not going to be showing videos for each level on the Newtonian difficulty because the video is already long enough and I don't want the guide to be too long. So if you would like a whole individual playthrough of that, please let me know. I have the footage, so I can upload it as a separate video if you'd like it as a guide. Within that Newtonian run, I do also get the um, special objective on mission two to get the whole antenna working within 10 minutes. But all I can advise is just make sure that you always have one hand gripping onto something when you are outside. Otherwise, you will end up just flying off and you'll need to restart the mission. It's not too difficult. It's just you need to get used to the movement and the controls. However, apart from that, once you're finished, that should net you the platinum trophy. Thank you very much for watching the guide. Uh, it's different to the last guide, but if you guys enjoy this, I'll be more than happy to make more of it. Uh, if there's any other games that you want me to make guides of, please leave a suggestion in the comments below. And please make sure to check out my website uh, on playstationtrophyservice.co.uk if you would like to get the trophy, but you can't be asked to get it yourself. But apart from that, thank you guys very much for watching the video. And I'll see you in the next one. So take care.